Tim Draper is still saying Bitcoin will be ten thousand dollars within three years. Of course he is. Good luck with that. <laughs> he owns millions of bitcoins. No, <laughs> is it millions or is it just millions of dollars in Bitcoin? I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. He he owns about three thousand bitcoins that he bought from the U.S. government, which yeah, eighteen million dollars at the oh at the time at the time at the time. That's so now, probably a little bit less now. Yeah, now it's still over ten million dollars. Um, but yeah, he wants to see that ten million turn into a billion dollars. So of course he's gonna say it's gonna be ten thousand dollars. Like, yeah. It's in his self-interest. I would be. I would. I would like to see Tim Draper. I don't know. Maybe he does have a blog or something. But I would like to see him write, um, you know, well-reasoned arguments and cases for where he thinks Bitcoin is going and why it'll be ten thousand dollars. Because you know, everyone involved in the space wants it to go to ten thousand. The hard part is justifying that price. Um, mm -hmm. You know, with convincing arguments and not only justifying it but like trying to imagine like a road map uh, for how the currency can evolve and become that valuable and and make the case for why people would want to buy it because people will will make the argument like oh if if you there's only so many bitcoins and if you divide it among the whole world then the price is like skyrockets to this you know this crazy amount but you know to get <laughs> to that just, point that assumes people actually want them yeah yeah, it assumes people actually want them and want to pay, you know, money for them out of their current financial system that they have going for themselves that, you know, in the case of the U.S. might include bank accounts, credit cards, loans, all that all that stuff is like, why would they want to own Bitcoin and put a sizable amount of wealth into Bitcoin? You can't force people to use it. Um, you can give it away for free and hope that they use it. That's what they're going to do in uh, Dominica. But you can't force people to use it, and you can do all the theoretical, you know, all the theoretical, you know, math calculations you want based on the population of the world to see how, you know, how much it'll be worth. But yeah, just because just because there's less Bitcoin, less Bitcoins than there are people doesn't mean uh, Bitcoin is going to be super valuable. Like value comes from uh, value comes from people like actually wanting it, not just from the fact that it exists and then there's less of it than there are people yeah. in the world. So, you know, the, even that argument, you could say, oh, well, there's like 7 billion people and 22 million bitcoins or something, or however many it is. So, yeah, w once everybody wants bitcoin, then it's going to be super valuable. Well, everybody has to want bitcoin first, and now yeah. we're returning. Now we're back at the argument of how do we make people want Bitcoin, and we have to make major improvements before we reach that stage. So yep. you know, like I personally, I think, I mean, I could see Bitcoin being worth, you know, one Bitcoin being worth like a million dollars, like maybe thirty years from now. Like mm -hmm. in on the long run, I'm extremely bullish on Bitcoin, but it going like way lower than it actually is because there's just no reason for it to go up right now there's no buying pressure well i mean there's yeah, buying like pressure getting, but not as much as people uh would like or anticipate yeah like it's getting much easier to spend now so people are like it's getting much easier to spend and um you know there are actually jobs that pay in bitcoin now so you know there's some portion of the community that's actually starting to use it like a currency instead of you know like gold some like a you know, yeah. investment like speculation this asset thing that, that, I, that i have that fluctuates in value they're actually yeah. using it to buy stuff and also earn it for their labor so yeah that's yeah that's good so you know people are actually using it as a currency um you know businesses still can't pay their suppliers in bitcoin so that right there creates a bunch of selling pressure and uh, there's no, like, there's no significant advances happening within the protocol itself to fix its problems, uh, which kind of makes it less attractive, you know, like, oh, what are these problems with Bitcoin? What's being done about it? 
Oh, well, nothing, because, you know, the one organization that has given itself the responsibility to improve Bitcoin's protocol is spending all their money on uh, governments. So, yeah, yeah nothing, nothing's really happening on that front. Oh, well, It's kind of stagnant yeah, right now. Yeah, it's, well, um, that sounds like I don't want it then. So, it's just, yeah. you know, people are getting rid of their Bitcoins faster than, you know, other people are buying it. So I so see then it going the value down. goes down. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I see it going down a lot further. But yeah. that's not a bad that's not a bad thing though. Like everybody's like, "Oh, if the, if the price goes to 100, then Bitcoin's over." Well, no. Like Yeah, no, no. Bitcoin was, was doing thousand, fine when it was 100 before. Yeah, the the price is at 1000 a couple months ago, and now it's at 400. Does that mean it's like, you know, that much like less revolutionary? I mean, Does that mean it works any different? No. Yeah, yeah. Like, price going down is not a bad thing in all cases. Sometimes yeah. the price is just, you know, over Maybe Bitcoin is just overvalued and it needs to go down. Which is my take on it. Yeah. Um, it's bad for people who, um, who bought a lot of Bitcoins. And they see it as an investment, and they also watch the price frequently. So it's it's bad for them because like they they bought into this expecting to treat it as this investment vehicle, as an asset, and it's really being used primarily as a currency. Um, and like they no, and if they watch the price, then that's as. pretty stressful. Yeah. yeah. So. It's like it, the lesson is, you know, if you first of all, I I don't recommend seeing it as an investment. You like you get the usefulness out of it instead of just buying it and letting it sit. Use it use it as a currency. Pay pay for things with it, but also earn it, and also you know buy it with like you know spare money that that you might have that you wouldn't necessarily mind. Um, seeing go down in value a little bit, you know, take 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 a risk with uh, with a little bit of your assets, but um, like, but you know, I can I I kind of I I can sympathize with those people who are like crazy, who who think the world is ending when the Bitcoin price goes down because um, I think you have a, like. A slightly different perspective on it because we have the luxury of actually getting paid in Bitcoin. Um, so, you know, we don't actually have to put any pre existing wealth into Bitcoin in order to have it, you know. Um, we just have to do our jobs. And, but, most people, most people don't have that luxury because, you know, Bitcoin jobs just aren't really a thing right now. Like, they're, they're, it's growing, you know, it's a, growing industry but you know it's it's not mainstream. not big enough yeah it's not big enough for everybody to have a bitcoin job so you have to put some most people majority people have to put some of their existing wealth into it um so you from that perspective it makes sense because there's just there's no reason to spend your bitcoin if it's worth less than it was when you bought it because then you're effectively um losing wealth you know cuz you're you bought a hundred dollars for like point uh, two Bitcoin, um, and then you use that to buy you know fifty dollars. You know, well you just threw fifty dollars in the trash can. You know, so uh, yeah, I can like I can kind of sympathize with them, but yeah, I, it, it it must be kind of painful, right, for the people who bought in earlier this year when. The, like at the beginning of the year when the price was at like 700 to 800 and like there was a lot of hype going on at the time and then to just see the price kind of kind of just flounder and stay stagnant um drop to around like 400 um in early spring then there was a spike in late May to uh the over the 600 range and then from there Slow, 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 steady uh, downward towards 400 again. And at this moment, $402 on uh, Bitstamp Exchange. So, uh, and and it could go much lower. Like, don't like if if you're gonna if you're gonna buy bitcoins and see it as an investment, like try not to watch the price too much. 
like maybe maybe watch the news relating to it instead of the price um yep. if you want to reduce your stress a little bit especially if you have you know thousands upon thousands of dollars um or hundreds of thousands of dollars maybe even millions if you're tim draper like <laughs> uh, man like i i, I hope he's successful though like regardless of what the bitcoin value is he's going to do some pretty interesting stuff with all that money um in terms of like uh foreign countries and promoting remittances between countries and you know getting to the world's unbanked population and there's huge potential there um for improving people's lives uh using the technology and not having to go through regular banks and financial institutions um like there's a lot of potential there and tim draper's you know best of luck to him